All right, hopefully a short video today. Uh, one of the drivers for someone who lives at my the building I work at came up and asked if I could take a look at his, I believe this is a GPS slash fish finder from his boat. Uh, he, he said there was a warning about the low battery, so basically I'm going to be changing out the um, lithium battery. I'm not sure if it's one or two battery actually, but batteries, but we'll see once we get in there. And uh, yeah, so he gave me part of it because the rest of it is still in his boat. And I looked at this. Now listen, I've gotten many electronics from people over the years. Hey, can you take a look at this? Can you can you fix this? What can you do? I have never received one duct taped into an old meat container. This is certainly a new one for me. Um, okay, so I think what we're going to do is first we're going to take this out and we're going to go ahead and replace this with an anti-static bag at the end of this because um, I'm not really feeling the old meat container. Um, there's also the issue of the fact that it is covered in hardened epoxy at the bottom, which is really weird. I don't know why there's epoxy on the bottom of this thing. What that's required for with meat, I don't know. But I'm not sure what model this is. Um, maybe we can find out. Well built. It's quite sturdy. Nice shielding. So uh, I think I'll pop this shielding off and we'll take a better look. Ooh, even the screen is made in Japan. Damn, this must be fancy. But, yeah, let's get this shielding off. This last one also has the grounding strap. I'll have to remember which one this is. Let's see if this wants to come off yet. Hopefully it's not soldered. Looks like it's got some locking pins, but I don't think it's actually... Oh, just one more screw. Sorry, what the hell is holding this thing on? Screws all have a little dab of uh, Loctite on them. It's always a sign of at least some level of quality. Okay, we're making progress. Let's see if... go. Ooh, nice heavy plate here. This thing must make a fair amount of heat. Got a nice thermal pad here just to fill in the gap. Very, very nice. It's got some weight to it. Not bad at all. Um, another thing I want to do uh, in this video is just talk quickly about my uh, new Heiko FR300 desoldering tool. Uh, I just picked it up well, actually, I picked it up around Christmas, but I haven't actually really used it much until recently. Man, it's nice. So, I'm just looking at the board real quick. We've got a big Cirrus Logic ARM based processor, a Maverick. It says it's a CLPS 7500. And we've got a Fru Fruno. Fruno chip? 14S4511. Zero? That's weird. Huh, not sure what that one is. There's even more heavy metal plating in here for uh, heat. Con oh, no, I think there's another chip on the other side. That's why, that's, you know, it's all helping to pull the heat away from the chips. Big interconnect here. He said most of it is still inside his, uh, his uh, boat. And it looks like it's, like an, it's a Nichicon cap. This is actually very well built. There's a couple little mods on it. You can see there's a small cap here running from one cap to a resistor. And uh, I saw another one a second ago. I've lost it now. Um, yeah, so it's, it is made by Furuno. That must be the uh, actual manufacturer or, you know, I don't know if it's rebadged. I'd have to ask him if uh, the actual device says that on it. So let's figure out where this battery is going. Okay, so we've got positive and then negative here. So that should be pretty easy to take out. Let me just check the spacing on that. Oh, I think that's designed for that. Okay, so with any luck, 
it should just pop right out and we can put in a socket because I hate companies that put in soldered batteries I don't know why they do it but ugh. Um, yeah so let's fire up the desoldering tool and see what we can do alright so this is my Heiko uh, FR300 which is the replacement for I believe the 808 and it's their kind of lower end desoldering tool as you can see it's a big gun shape and uh, a desoldering tool if you don't know has a soldering iron tip basically but with a hole in it and what is essentially an aquarium pump and uh, a little container in which to hold solder and what happens is you all right now um, you would heat up a joint and then hit the button and suck up all the solder thus removing all the solder and I've used this a little bit so far and I really really like it mostly because I've been desoldering manually all this time with a shitty little um, manual pump this guy and it's terrible and solder braid is good but you know solder braid is kind of annoying to use because you a you use up a ton of it and b uh, you know it's kind of finicky it never well it, it does work if you get really good solder braid it does work but it's still kind of a pain in the ass to use uh, this, however, is really nice. So, it uh, has a couple different tips you can get. They're quite expensive in the $20 range. Uh, this is a 1.6 millimeter nozzle. Uh, it comes with a 1.4, if I'm not mistaken. And it also comes with this kind of nifty metal doohickey that lets you remove everything and uh, swap out the tip without shutting it off since uh, you know when you're working on something you can easily go through a bunch of different tips so that is kinda cool not sure if I put that on there. Uh, it looks okay and uh, yeah it's heat shielded so you're uh, not gonna burn yourself it also comes with this and you're wondering why the hell is there just a chunk of metal in the case and it's so when you put this away in the case which uh, I can't really show it's kind of off to the side and big um, this is so when you put it off to the side and you put it in the case and it's still hot it doesn't melt the case which is just I don't know that just seems ridiculous to me and these are the consumables you have a uh, little cotton pads and a metal um, almost like a backsplash. It sucks in and hits the metal and harden, the solder hardens onto the metal. Um, this disassembles and lets you get into the pump assembly and this button. Um, this pulls back to get you into the little cleaning area but uh, this is what locks it in. Very satisfying. Uh, this has an on off switch which the old model didn't. Uh, it's adjustable. Uh, it's just got four preset ranges all the way up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit which is or sorry Celsius which is uh, 930 degrees Fahrenheit uh, yeah I just have it on one or two I think yeah just uh, one right now I think so let's see if we can take this off oh and this is the stupidest holder in the world I don't even know how you're supposed to use it I think like this like okay I would like to know why they didn't just, for, you know, forget the carrying case, give me a modified one of these that holds it. Or even one of these. I don't even care that it doesn't look pretty. This is so much better than that stupid piece of metal. Ah, uh, I don't know. This is from my uh, Heiko Triple Eight D soldering iron. But, without further ado, let's take these two pins out. Just stick it on. Do a second heat up. Done. Stick it on. Done. It's that easy. Just a slight oversight. There's actually two pins for the positive terminal. So just heat that up. There we go. And that should be it for the battery. All right, so let me grab my trusty side cutters 
And this is actually a CR2450 3 volt cell from Panasonic. But what I want to do is just double check um, how thick this is. Make sure it's not two batteries. I, 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 you know, looking at it, I'd say it's one. And the uh, 2450 cell designation is the size. So 50 means it's fairly thick. And, yep, just one cell. Just wanted to double check on that. So what we can do now, so let's grab the trusty fluke. Desoldering pump. Let's get some test leads of some description. I don't really care which ones. Ah, these will do. These are the standard fluke design, or the included fluke ones with my 17B. Plus. Let's just get an open circuit voltage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 0.1 volt. Actually, it's reading negative 0.1 volts for some reason. Not sure why. It could be really dead. Yeah. That's in rough shape. So, let's see what we can do about putting in a standard uh, 2032. Now, this probably won't last as long because it's, uh, it's a smaller battery design than the uh, much, much beefier one that was included, as you can see. Look at the thickness difference. These guys are pretty puny, but they still make three volts, so should be enough. And these are readily available. I mean, these are in every, they're in everything, really. <laughs> every uh, computer uses one, you know, they're, they're everywhere. So, one of the things we want to double check before we put it in is those two pins for positive, we want to make sure that they're linked together because we're only going to be using one of them. So we want to make sure that we're not leaving something unconnected. Now there's no real reason why they wouldn't be joined together, which they are. You can see the trace running from here to here. But just in case, you know, you want to give it a little look. And uh, this is a pulled one, you can tell, because there's solder all over it. Let me see if I have one that's a little bit cleaner. Okay, this is a bit cleaner. And this is negative. Let's just see if this lines up with anything. I don't wanna I don't wanna disassemble this whole thing, so if I can avoid it. Hang on. Let me try this without the camera. See what we can do. Alright, so what I've done is I just kind of whacked it in and I tried super gluing it and it's just the spacing is a little weird so it didn't want to stand because it keeps falling out obviously and you know it's hard to work with the camera in the way so what I'm going to do is uh, I just or I hack uh, I hit it a little bit with the soldering iron just to blob on something just to hold it there and I'm just going to hit this end it was very hard to do through a camera. Let's see if I can get around. I think this needs a bit of flux. Hang on. It doesn't seem to be flowing too well with this like 80 billion layer board. Let's try that again. Let me see if I got my tip cleaner out. Hit it with some tip cleaner too. Good old filthy thing of tip cleaner. Ooh, look at that smoke. I guess you can't. Trust me, it's there. Very smoky. Yeah, this is just uh, some MG Chemicals tip cleaner. I like MG Chemicals. They make a lot of good stuff. So, let's see if we can solder this one connection. There we go. I think this is falling out again. Try heating this up. There we go. There. And I'll just uh, fill in this last hole. Just uh, you know, 
because I'm a completionist. There we go. Good enough. Alright, let's check her out on the other side. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if you can get in there. Yep, just uh, pretty simple. And pop in a battery. Oh no, I think it goes in this side. Won't be the easiest thing to replace. I'll have to jam a screwdriver in there to pop it out, but hey, at least you don't need a soldering iron to do it. So, that should work. Let's just, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious if uh, everything's powering up in there because he said that there were other problems. There were problems with the display or something, and since he only gave me half of it, I can't exactly power this thing up and give her a test, so let's just see what we can see. Good old fluke. Much crap on my desk. And we've got three volts. Perfect. Well, I'm going to say that that is a successful repair. I don't know if anything else on the thing works, but hey. I guess we'll find out. I asked him when he needed it and he said, Oh, I don't care. My boat's covered in snow and covered up for the winter. So maybe I will find out in five months. Oh well. See ya.